Okay, here we are with our uh, project Super 10, BSA Super 10 in 177 caliber. And uh, this video is going to be a little different in the sense that um, I want to summarize where I'm at with this gun in particular and then uh, maybe ruminate or opine a little bit about uh, the Super 10 in general. Um, this particular gun, uh, where we're at, and, and this gun actually reinforces uh, uh, my thinking about why I don't tune guns professionally. Um, I spent more time with this particular uh, BSA Super 10 than I've spent with my wife and family this month. and um, That's just too much on one gun. I, you can't make, uh, make a living doing that. So um, what I've done with this one though is, is uh, I had tuned it up to about uh, 17 and a half foot pounds, the combination of the regulator and the hammer spring. Um, but it was fairly harsh on the caulking uh, mechanism, kind of unpleasant. Uh, and the velocity it was giving out was uh, pretty erratic. I mean, it varied up to about 50 feet per second, uh, which was, you know, that's not even acceptable in a, in a non-regulated gun. And I thought, Perhaps part of the problem, uh, as you see here, they've, uh, they've ground out this section around here. And um, you know, my thinking was that they probably retracted the bolt when they did this. Uh, they may have taken the bolt out altogether, I don't know. but. Um, they certainly took out an awful lot of material here. It looks like they just took a grinder or something, a, a Dremel or a, a angle grinder or something like that. And you can see that there's not very much material left here. Uh, so there's a couple of things that I think might have been causing the, the uh, problem with the velocity fluctuation. One is that it was just simply it was filthy. And uh, there was a lot of grit on the inside here, and that's actually why you know, if you've seen the disassembly video, uh, what got me going on that was uh, just to clean this out so that all the mechanisms could move more freely. Um, and that helped very small, but, but not much on uh, reducing the extremes in the velocity. Uh, and so eventually I ended up retuning the regulator and the hammer spring uh, and got it down to about 14 and a half, or a little under 14 and a half foot pounds. And it, it cocks very pleasantly. Um, you know, the, the caulking cycle is very pleasant and easy. You get a ton of shots at this power level, and it's uh, pretty consistent. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with the consistency. It, you know, it's less than uh, 10 feet per second. Uh, and uh, I think most of my strings I got were around, you know, six feet per second variation. So it's pretty consistent. The problem with it is it's not very accurate. When I scoped it and, uh, and took it out, uh, it kind of scattershot. And that's not what I was expecting out of this, this gun here. And I think what's happened is this material that was removed here. You can see there's just a very small amount here, really, that's left. And I think that um, it's just giving it a little bit of flex here uh, during the shot cycle. It may be moving, um, flexing just a little bit on each shot, and, and that may be throwing the shots off. So I, I think this is too much, what they've taken out here. Um, most of the time, you, if you're going to do this so you can load with a single shot, you might cut a little bit off this side or the back, but not the front and the back and the top. So um, I think it's just too much removed there. Uh, the upshot of all this is that um, this gun is going up on the shelf until I can find a new receiver uh, to, uh, to put on here. And uh, I know Nibs has them in, uh, over in the UK, um, but I'm going to see if I can't find one closer to home and hopefully uh, cheap uh, to use in place of this. And uh, hopefully that'll address all these issues that uh, we're having with velocity and accuracy. Um, I, I will say just in passing that as if this makes me want to have a 12-foot-pound uh, Super 10 because it's just so pleasant to shoot and you 
you know, you can shoot all day on one, uh, one bottle of air, and uh, it's just very pleasant and quiet. So having this uh, regulator tester is both a blessing and a curse. You know, if you don't have one, you really don't have any idea how much pressure your regulator is, uh, is showing to the valve here. And so you're kind of like flying blind, and you can just do the best you can in that, in that circumstance. The other thing is when somebody's gone through a regulator and uh, adjusted it uh, way beyond uh, normal, and in this case, uh, it wasn't even working, the regulator in here, um, the tester really helps you to bring it back and, um, and know where you're at and what adjustments you need to make within the regulator to get the pressure that you want here. If you don't have a tester, of course, my recommendation has always been send it off to somebody else to rebuild it, and they can rebuild it to your specifications, whatever you want. One uh, here in the United States is uh, Joe Corrick, and I'll put some links up on the description of this video uh, to hopefully help you find uh, someone. If you're um, in the UK, there's the BS, uh, BSA Owners Group, um, you could go on there, and there's several uh, good tuners in the UK uh, that you can uh, send your regulator to, or the whole gun, and they can set it up for you. John Bowkett as well, uh, I understand, is uh, blueprinting regulators uh, at this point. If you do decide um, to build it yourself, rebuild it yourself, I guess the best advice I can give you is um, to pay close attention to the spacing within here of the um, underneath the piston within the cylinder here and how much shimming there is inside um, this between the piston and the plunger in here. Keep track of that. Uh, if you were, I'm assuming you're rebuilding it because something went wrong and it's not working right. So if you were happy with it before, uh, put it back together exactly as it was and you should be happy with it um, into the future. Uh, I will say that I used, um, I have used photo negatives uh, within here to shim and those photo negatives I think were about six one thousandths of an inch. And for each of those shims, uh, the pressure in the regulator to the valve uh, increased by roughly 80 uh, psi. And keep that in mind that uh, for each thousandth of an inch you shim here, uh, you're probably going to get 12, 15 uh, psi out of it on this end, at least within uh, the limits of operation there. You can see there's different adjustments you can make. Um, if you go to uh, Robert Lane Designs, on YouTube, he goes through uh, regulators, not this particular style, but talks about all the different adjustments you can make uh, to the gun. And uh, with the curse of the regulator tester is that you tend to do all your adjusting with the regulator pressure when there's numerous other things you can do. Um, you can adjust the transfer port here. The, the size of the transfer port will make some difference. If you do that, you've got the tube and also the barrel that have to be um, adjusted as well or uh, drilled out or whatever you're going to do to them, resized. Um, you can't resize this without looking at the rest of the uh, transfer port system. Uh, you can shim the exhaust valve spring here, uh, and that might That might make this close faster, uh, make the exhaust valve in here close faster, uh, make it harder to push open. Uh, that would be another thing that you might be able to adjust. Uh, of course, the uh, uh, shims underneath the piston here and the shims in here are other ways that you can adjust um, that actually adjusts the regulator rather than the other components. And then finally, you've got the hammer spring. And we've got the other video where we tear the uh, tear this apart and get the hammer spring out. Well, there are different springs you can put in here with different tensions. Uh, you can add shims. You can cut coils off. There's all kinds of things you can do uh, to adjust the hammer spring tension here. So there's a lot going on. And, and you don't want to rely solely on 
the output pressure from the regulator when there's all this other stuff that you can do. Well, I guess my last comment about this regulator is uh, you see the modern style where uh, what you basically do is turn a screw within the regulator to adjust the ten uh, pressure, output pressure. And this is a lot of work for something that uh, another regulator can give you with just a turn of a screw. I will say that within the limits um, of its design, its uh, mine was very uh, reliable for many years until it finally went bad or many thousands of shots and um, so th the design does work but it's just very difficult to uh, to work with. Um, the reason that I started working on my own guns is uh, basically because there was no support and we didn't have much on the internet at the time. Uh, our importer here into the United States was um, uh, well, we changed. We have had probably six importers over the last 10, 12 years, and there have been times when there's been no importer and no other service uh, representatives here in the United States. So basically, if something was wrong, you had to figure out how to fix it yourself, and, and that's in part what this series of videos is intended to do, is to help those people who are in the same position uh, as I was uh, with how the gun works, how you might fix it, adjust it, and um, that type of thing. So uh, I hope this uh, video has been of some help in that regard. I will revisit this particular gun as soon as I get a new uh, receiver for it. And uh, thank you for watching.